Let's go ahead and talk about what else you would want to do. Say everything I got out of the structure wizard is exactly the way I want it. I don't need to make any modifications or any additions. What else would I want to do in the physical modeler? Well, two major steps. I'm going to want to generate my load combinations here. Okay. I'm also going to want to add my analysis commands. Okay. So let's go ahead and generate our load combinations. So here I'm going to go to my loading tab. I'm going to use the automatic load combination generator. OK, I'm going to select my code. I'm using the ACI 318. OK, I can review my combinations it's going to create. And let's go ahead and click OK. If I want to see that again, we're going to navigate. Oh, it automatically switched me. I was going to say we need to navigate through the spreadsheet tab, but it automatically switched me over. So that was good. So you can see here all the information that it created for you, okay? In addition to that, we're gonna create our analysis command as well. So now at this point, we're gonna tell the program what type of analysis we want. You can see the analysis commands icon is now available because our model contains information, okay? So let's go ahead and click on analysis commands. And tell the program what I want to design. I'm going to go with the P delta today. I can enter my number of iterations to save time. I'm going to go with just one iteration just because I am going to perform the analysis. So you can see that everything I entered was valid. So to save time, of course, you're going to want to enter the total number of iterations if you're doing an iterative solution to be appropriate. So let's go ahead and click OK. All right, am I ready to go over the analytical modeler? There's one last step I wanna take a look at and that's my design settings. So I'm gonna to go to the data tab of the ribbon toolbar and I'm gonna click on my options icon, okay? Whenever we are performing a model or performing our modeling steps in the physical modeler, I like to take a look at my model options specifically my analysis model options. This will be the point where you can go ahead and tell the program or customize how you want your analytical model to be created. A couple of key points here. I'm performing a P delta analysis. I want to create repeat primary load cases. Repeat primary load cases will capture second order effects, okay? Because that allows the loads to be added in tandem, which will basically be able to capture those effects with the intent of a P-delta analysis. In addition to that, I'm able to enter the maximum allowed distance between nodes. This will control the meshing of your system, okay? Now, the way the physical modeler works is that the anal analysis model options that we're seeing here, this is a global criteria, okay? So I can use this field to enter the maximum allowed distance between nodes for globally on the model. Within the spreadsheet area of the physical modeler, though, you are able to go ahead and specify things on a one-off basis. So if, for example, I wanted the walls of my system to have a tighter mesh than, say, my slabs of my system for whatever reason, um, then I can go ahead and enter those independently or basically tighten up their meshing through the spreadsheet area. I'm going to go ahead and keep the default area, but it's important to understand that these are capabilities that you have in the physical modeler, which are not necessarily available in the analytical modeler. It's kind of hard to kind of undo your mesh once you create a mesh in the physical modeler. You have that flexibility to go ahead and play around with different mesh densities, which is very powerful. So let's go ahead and click OK. And at this point, let me save my model because that's always a good idea. And let me go back to the analytical modeler. Okay, and we'll click OK. My model data is being created. Now, the physical modeler and the analytical modeler, you can go back and forth. So if after coming over here, I see this and I'm like, mm, I want a tighter mesh density, of course, I can go back to the physical modeler, make adjustments. OK, um, if I decide, oh, the thickness of the slab needs to change again, you're going to make changes to your modeling steps in the physical modeler. In addition to that, it's also important to understand how the input file works when you have a model that contains a physical model. 
So the way the input model, the input file works for STAD Pro Connect Edition is all of the information that you create in the physical modeler is locked once you get over here. Okay, so we're not going to make changes to things like slab thicknesses or analysis commands or any of that or anything that comes in between those steps in the analytical modeler. We would do those types of things over in the physical modeler. And to maintain consistency, we've gone ahead and locked that input file um, just to resist the temptation of trying to, to make changes here. Now, if you ever come to a point where you want to start dropping your physical model, we do allow that to happen. However, we should know that that's a one-time operation. I might recommend doing a save as just so that you, you know, um, have your original just in case you want to go back to it. So if you ever wanted to do that, you can go to utilities and you can drop your physical model. Again, that's an unreversible operation. Okay. So here we've gone through all of the major modeling steps. And of course, we can review any of that information that was created. Um, here we can see all our load cases. Uh, here, if we wanted to see, these are all the trapezoidal loads that went ahead and created for us with our mesh. Um, and this has a quite an irregular mesh. So that would have been um, fairly challenging to do um, ourselves. So you can see here, basically, all of these trapezoidal loads um, have been created. And again, this is like a very powerful tool for not just creating model geometry, but also assisting you in getting the loading, getting the specification supports within your system. Now, at this point, let me go ahead and perform an analysis because that would be my next logical step. You could see I have an analysis command. As I mentioned, I'm not doing iterative analysis today just to save some time in this environment. Okay, my modeling is done, my analysis is done, and I can still go over to the post processor if I wanted to, to basically review any of the results. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you some stresses in one of the compartments, and then I'll click okay. I like to show this view because I think it's kind of neat to see how you know each, each area would be loaded and, and basically what that would affect in. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.